You can probably see my, my badge, well you can't see it at the back now, but Nikki didn't put it up there. It actually says Stuart Lindsay Weldon. <laughs> so I just thought this, this opportunity can advertise. If you want some really good welding, no. <laughs> no, sorry. Well, basically I, I attended a meeting at Rackheath uh, a couple of years ago and I was really, really dismayed at, at the fact that people like me and yourselves just got up and, and, and were asking, putting their hands up and saying, you know, hang on a minute, that doesn't make sense, that doesn't make sense. And it was just like really, really common sense, sensible questions people were asking. And the guys that were supposed to be the experts were going, but, but, yeah, uh, uh, and, and stammering and stuttering. And I thought, what the hell are they doing? They haven't got a clue what they're talking about. And my dad always said to me, never open your mouth unless you know what you're talking about. So I'll sit down with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, so of course, I thought myself, I'm going to read up about this eco towns and the ethos and all that's going about. So I'm going to give you, a, I'm going to be quicker now because we're, we're, we're running on, um, as I do occasionally. And uh, I'll just give you a little brief of what it was and, and how it all started off and how I, you know, my opinion. And, and But not really my opinions, it's facts. These are facts. And I mean, we've spoken about this to councillors and, and to planners and developers. We've had numerous meetings, etc. And when you give them the facts, they clam up. I know there's none of them here today to, to, to contradict what we're saying because they can't. Mm. And this is, the, this is the, the simple truth, and that's why we're here. Everywhere we've been, we've done little meetings, as Stephen said, we've done it off our own back. It costs you know, us money or whatever, and these guys are getting paid thousands using our money to print full color brochures and big books and presentations and community representation shows, and we don't. But not, I'll tell you something, and not, uh, which delights me, out of all the, the shows and, and uh, I say shows, I'm talking about like this is a show, the events we've done, I think three people out of about 4,000 people have actually come up to me and said, we want Eco Town. Three people. So anyway, I'm just going to give, if, if you're not sure what an Eco Town is, I'm going to give you a, a, a quickie, basically. My wife says it's a poster what? <laughs> anyway. This is off the top of my head now, this first bit, yeah? Eco, I looked it up, eco, because this word's brandished around, there's lots of words that are the in words, the buzzwords as they call it. Eco, yeah? It's not eco like you probably know, like margarine that when your mum used. But <laughs> <laughs> you're saying, oh, I'm wasting time. <laughs> no, eco, yeah? It comes from the word, uh, it's a Greek word meaning eco, meaning home. Now it's been turned around and turned around, and of course we use the word, and you're familiar with this, Ecological, ecologically sound, ecologically friendly, and everything pertaining to that. Now, when we look at that, people, it's, it's interjecting in people's minds. They say, oh, yeah, it's good for the environment because it's ecologically sound, or it's friendly. So they shorten it to the word eco, and they use it with everything. Eco cars, eco cycling. Just, I've got a three-litre car, and just because I don't use my four-litre car, I've been eco-friendly. That's exactly the same sort of scenario they're using. By the way, I haven't got a three- or a four-litre car. I just thought I'd mention that. Anyway, so... To our tale, eco towns. Gordon Brown went to Stockholm a few years ago. To uh, uh, it was basically a contaminated brownfield site right on the edge of the city called Hammerby, and they basically thought we've got all this. It's just like the, just like what they did with the uh, uh, in London, and they made it the uh, this bloody Millennium Dome thing. Used public money, cleared up all the poison land, but the Swedes. They were building it for, a, for a, a, a bid, for the Olympic bid, but it failed. So they thought, and the sweet people what they are, sensible people, they thought, I'll tell you what we'll do. We've got all this land here, it's good land now. Let's actually build an eco town. And they went ahead. And you can see it down there, Hammerby. There are thousands and thousands of people that live there. They have a different ethos though, different, different mentality. They were bought into that and they thought, right, if we're gonna live there, we're gonna do things properly. In other words, they're sort of they're, they're prompted not to use cars, but we will use bicycles. We're right on the edge of the city. Why do we need cars? We can get the local transport. Yes, we'll put a green tram. In, and I'm sorry, to use the, the word green, but we'll put a sustainable tram in there, and we use that. Or we can walk to work, or we can actually cycle, or we can use the public transport sector, and that's what they do. Now, Gordon Brown is intimate wisdom. I'm being apolitical now because they're all the same as far as I'm concerned. Uh, came back and said yes. We're going to have an eco towns in Britain, yeah. But of course, oh, oh an eco town uh, miles out in the countryside, 
I don't think so. So that's how it all came about. Hammerbeam. There we go. Sensible people thinking ahead. What we'll do is we'll have a we'll have a waste plant here on the one side, and what we'll do is we'll regenerate everything. We'll bring in uh, what they call sustainable fuels, and we'll power it. We'll use byproducts, waste, wood chip, anything that's rubbish, and like that, and we'll do, we can as much as possible. We'll use that to power the houses, to heat the houses. There's a CHP plant. They use biodegradable stuff, wood chips, stuff that comes from forests which are you know, uh, uh, out of use or the trees are gone or they're doing some other bits and pieces but they're using it for generating their own power. Uh oh. <laughs> this is the bit I was going to struggle with. Rackheath. Now I live in Rackheath, I love Rackheath and I've been here for 12 years and like people say, I moved here through a choice to bring my family up in an environment which I thought was fantastic. We lived in a city, we lived in London and as David said, I didn't want to live there anymore. I, I, I worked hard, I saved my pennies and I thought, right, my children deserve a better way of life. Don't get me wrong, the city was great, highlight and uh, you know, nightclubs or whatever, but you get old, you know, you can't do it all the time. I'm down to once, once a month now. So there we have Rackheath. As you can see, there's the area, you all know what Rackheath is, yeah, it's green fields. And basically, green fields, whether it's for agriculture or, as we used to put in the old days, the green belts around the city, it was for oxygen. So it's fresh air for us, and it's also food for us. And now, what do they want to do? They want to concrete. I'm afraid to say, having looked into all the plans and documents, and all the revised plans, and all the little program boards, etc., etc., what they put forward, I'm going to tell you now, on the posters, it says what it says on the posters, it's an eco-con. I'm not saying that to frighten you, because the information is there for you. You can look at it. All I've done is saved you a lot of time and a lot of effort. It's an eco-con. Because basically, what they're going to do to start with, is they're going to build houses to a very, very low standard. And as David probably said, or even Richard said, in 2016, that standard will go up to grade six. And then what they'll probably have to do is, because it has been mentioned, and the council have said this, those houses that they build, if they're going to build them next year, they'll need more money to retrofit them up to the standard grade in 2016. Hmm. Does that seem right? Doesn't seem right to me. Ranky, there's in yellow the proposed uh, eco town. Thousands of thousands of houses. It started off, as you heard, it started off 2,400, 3,100. Do I hear the back? Do I hear a bit at the back? 4,003, 4,004, 4, 5, 10. Sold. 16,000. Because that's what it could be. I'm not scared of attacking you. That's what it could be. When you think of the projection for the Broadly Triangle, the Growth Triangle, yeah, is now at 47,000 houses. That is a fact. Well, it's not a fact because it might change tomorrow. It could be more. The density, I was very, priv I was very privileged. One of the guys, I think, in the back there uh, just phoned me out of the blue and I didn't, I thought, I don't know you. He phoned me because I put my number on these posters and he said, oh, there's a, there's a meeting tonight. Would you like to go? And I said, well, who are you? What meeting is this? You know? And he said, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a meeting of the Institute of Civil Engineers. So I thought, well, I look like a civil engineer, I'll go along. So I did. And at that time, the consulting engineers called Millard, so very well respected, the chief, one of the head honchos was there. And obviously he felt at home with his civil engineering partners, and he went on to extol what they were going to do in Rackheath. And I tell you, if the council don't know what he said, what they do now, they bloody well should do. Because he was, he was talking about 47 units per hectare. I mean, that is, anybody know about, anybody know about density of housing here? I mean, I'm just a welder, but I mean, what is 47 he per hectare? Too bloody many. Too bloody many. <laughs> I'll give it a 10 later, right? Okay. Yeah, twice as many, yeah? 19 an acre. Yep, 19 an acre, yeah. That's the 